Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. Today I'm back with a review video and it's one I've been working on for some time and I'm really excited to share with you. And that's a review about the series of unfortunate events by Lemony Snicket. This is a 13 book middle grade series that was published between 1999 and 2006 by Lemony Snicket, which is a pseudonym for the author Daniel Handler. In this review I'm not gonna go into spoilers, I want to talk about the brief outline of what the plot is starting into the books, who are the important characters, and I also want to take some time and talk about the themes that I think are addressed in this series and I, that I thought was really interesting to follow reading these books again as an adult. And I'll briefly take a moment to tell you my thoughts on the Netflix adaptation. The series in general is written from the perspective of a man called Lemony Snicket and he is an actual character within the biggest frame of the story. The books are essentially accounts of what he is investigating about the lives of three orphaned children and it's not really clear in the beginning what his agenda is and why he's researching the lives of the children. And most interestingly, he dedicates all these accounts to a mysterious woman he calls Beatrice. The three orphans I'm talking about are the main characters. They are Violet, Klaus and Sunny. And the story begins when they are out on the beach one day and a banker called Mr. Poe comes up to meet them and tells them that their parents have just died in a terrible fire that destroyed their home. And the whole series follows our three main characters as they are basically dragged from guardian to guardian and trying to find their place, trying to build a home for themselves and also investigating what happened to their parents and why did this fire even occur. The overall tone of the series is something that I really enjoy and it might not be everyone's cup of tea but it's very dark and it has kind of gothic and absurdist undertones. The overall feeling also reading these books is kind of mysterious because you follow along as a reader with these children and all the information and bits and pieces that they get uh, trying to find out what happened to their parents. So let's talk about our main protagonists. First obviously we have the three orphan children and while reading the series I really felt how I grew attached to them and really literally followed them growing up throughout the series and kind of honing their talents and becoming more than they were to start with. Violet is the eldest of the siblings and she is a bit of an inventor. She always likes to solve problems through her knowledge of mechanics and all kinds of things and she is very much the first child in that she always feels responsible for her siblings. Klaus, the second child, is an avid reader. He is an impersonation of all the bookworms among us. He loves to read, he is always asking questions and wants to understand the world around him and he has this knack for researching things which gets the kids out of bad situations a lot of the times. Sunny is the baby girl and she's the youngest. Starting out in the series she can barely talk and talks in these nonsensical one-word sentences that only her siblings seem to understand and kind of translate back to us as readers. However, she is quite tough and this is shown literally through her incredible strength of jaw and she is the one always gnawing at things and later develops a talent for cooking. Another main character I have to mention is the first guardian that these kids are brought to and a very important protagonist in the series throughout and that's Count Olaf. He essentially convinced the people who are in charge of the estate of the Baudelaire orphans to be the guardian to these children and there is a more darker plan 
underneath the surface of what he plans with these kids. And he is actually quite open about it from the get-go and from the first book. He is basically hunting them down to get to the fortune that their parents left behind. And now I want to talk about some interesting themes that I kind of picked up upon reading the series as a whole and what ultimately I think made my enjoyment of reading this series even stronger. And I'm going to start with a general theme that you can get throughout the series and that is that these kids are going through a series of unfortunate events as the title of the series says but what they're going through is very much things that children in their age in the real world could be going through and I really appreciate the message that it's giving to kids who would be reading these books and I think that's what appealed to me when I started reading them when I was really young. They have to deal with a range of not so nice things, including bullying at school, not being taken seriously by the people, the adults that um, take charge of them, um, being neglected by adults, but also things like peer pressure and the pressure of family and people around them. Another aspect of the unfortunate things they're going through is um, kind of symbolized by the effect that adults around them have on their lives. Each guardian that they go through or each person that takes care of them for a certain time are a bit representative of specific ills of our society. We have parents or guardians that are cruel, some of them are too naive, submissive, secretive, egoistical, incompetent, corrupted by power, and there's also bits and pieces about things like the corruption of the justice system and what it means for orphan affairs, as well as small town politics. Another theme that I noticed is that obviously this whole series is a story of children growing up and coming of age. And as many of us um, who are in process of growing up and growing old and getting more experience in life. When embarking on this journey of reading these series, you also embark on a journey with these kids in growing up and understanding some things around them and about life itself. And a lot of these things are not very agreeable things, um, but I think it's things that we can all relate to and that we all in some way or form went through and that was really interesting to follow. Firstly, there's this process of these children idealizing their dead parents and being stuck with this idea of what their parents were and when these parents are gone, not being able to put this together with things that they hear about their parents around them after their death. So. It goes from this kind of form of adoration of the parents to starting to see them as human beings with flaws and who maybe have not always done the best things for their kids as well. There's another aspect and that's something that we all, all continuously learn about and have to deal with is this idea of uh, right or wrong and what is right for me to do and what's wrong and how many gray zones there is in these concepts. And that's also something that the Baudelaire orphans have to go through and question throughout their adventures. There's these themes of putting out fires and starting out fires, aiding crimes or committing crimes in self-defense. And I think they also learn throughout the series a lot of important concepts such as learning like moral decision making and question things like does the end justify the means. Another aspect I particularly enjoyed seeing developed in this series is also the children realizing that there's no such thing as completely good and completely bad people and this is something that I don't feel like gets talked about a lot in children's fiction and that's something I really really enjoyed in these series. Um, there's a lot of morally grey characters or characters that first are portrayed as good and turn out to have serious flaws 
And then on the other hand, you have people who look really bad and cruel and you start to understand why they are like this and that there might have been something behind that, things that they have to live through. And I think one sentence from the last book, which is not a spoiler, um, sums this concept really well within the series and how it's dealt with in the series. And that is, everyone has unfortunate events. Another thing that the orphans have to learn is what, how to deal with the loss of their parents, but ultimately it's also about losing that feeling that there's always going to be this adult person or this more experienced person than you who is going to get you out of trouble all the time. And I think ultimately it's a lot in this aspect of the children growing up in this series, it's a lot about taking ownership of your life and being more active about how you want your life to be and how you want to change it for the better. And that's literally what they do more and more throughout the series by being more proactive against Count Olaf and how he is always behind their backs and it's ultimately about stopping to run at some point and fight back. Another theme that was obviously for me as a reader lovely to see represented in these books is a lot of literary references but also just in general the power of being a bookish person. Um, obviously a good representer of that is Klaus the middle child. He is able to save the children's asses a lot of time um, by researching things and there's just through the characters and the places there are a lot of allusions to literary things and books. Um, you have obviously the banker Mr. Poe who is named after Edgar Allan Poe and even more allusions to Edgar Allan Poe through um, the Nevermore tree and the importance of the ravens in the seventh book in the series. Um, you have a certain Dr. Orwell who's obviously a reference to George Orwell's 1984 and there's also an instance where the children have to use the plot of Anna Karenina to open a secret lock and I mean to finish obviously the Orphans are called Baudelaire, and that's obviously an allusion to uh, one of my favorite poets, Charles Baudelaire. And another aspect that I thought was also really interesting in connection with like being bookish and literary is that a lot of the bad, bad characters are usually not so literate. Um, they might be using bad grammar and be actually corrected by the children or use words in a wrong context and that's something for example that Count Olaf does a lot throughout the series he constantly mixes up words and in general characters who are more like good um, tend to admire literature admire music and opera and things like this another theme that I could discover throughout the series is just in general the importance of words and it's shown in many different aspects throughout the book. There's a lot of play on words and you can really see that the author is a big fan and kind of buff of literature and he likes to play around with it and that's just really entertaining to read actually. The style in which the books are written is a bit peculiar and you might have to get used to it a bit but I personally really enjoy it and that's that the author uses words that for maybe the audience of the, ch of the people who would read these series would be a bit complicated words, big words. And he does this thing where he has this definition style of writing. So he says the word and then he's, he would say, which in this case means, and then explains the word in the context that it is used in. And that might sound a bit weird but I think it really plays well with the overall absurdist tone of the books. Um, there's a lot with play of words as I said. Um, you can start by talking about the alliterations in the names of every single book in the series. Um, the Grim Grotto, the Carnivorous Carnival and so on. There's a general a lot of word play and it's also showcased through some of the characters in the series. Um, one of the orphan's guardian has a huge love for grammar. Um, we have another character that 
writes poetry and sends messages through sonnet. There's a lot of play on words that is done through how Sunny, the youngest sister, is talking because as I said she talks in one word sentences and often the word kind of sums up what she wants to say and this sometimes is correlated with literary or historic references. Um, for example, if she would talk about someone who is spying on them, she would say Matahari. And another thing that is strong throughout the books is the confusion around a certain abbreviation and the orphans discover very quickly that there's this ominous secret organization called VFD and throughout the whole book it's a real confusion of abbreviations and the children always try to guess what VFD stands for and the author peppers in a lot of possible things that the abbreviation could stand for and it always leaves the reader guessing. The last theme I want to mention that I noticed reading the books is in general just a discussion and exploration on seeking the truth and truth versus secrets and what that means for someone's life. Um, as I said, the orphans on, in this series are on a journey to understand what happened, why did the fire happen, what does it all mean, why did their parents have to die. And in doing that, they're frantically looking for this mysterious VFD organization. And this obsession of the kids in understanding what VFD stands for, I think, is representative for, in general, just them understanding their life, what happened to them, and how they can go on from there. And in a very meta way, we as readers also want to understand what's the meaning behind all of this. And we are essentially reading these books to uncover the secrets that the Baudelaire orphans are um, seeking to understand as well. But also we want to understand a few more things that are around this narrative. And that is, um, who is this Lemony Snicket guy? Why is he even writing these books? Who is this Beatrice woman? And I think one of the big points that this series is also trying to make as a whole is just the expectations that we have as humans of always wanting to find out more, always wanting to understand our world better. And I mean, as a scientist, I'm really no stranger to these cravings. But I think what these books also argue is that there's only a certain point to what you can find out and understand, and you can never uncover everything. And sometimes revelations and answers can only lead to more questions and there's always going to be something left open. People around us are always going to be secretive about something or another. I told you that this review would not be spoilery, that's why I'm not going to go too far on this, but I have seen a lot of one-star reviews about the last book in the series and I think I can understand these reviews, but just for me thinking about this series and even thinking about it more after I finished reading them. And after digesting all of this, I feel like how the last book ends ties in with a lot of this theme that I am talking about right now. And I think it's part of what ultimately made me love the series even more. Another thing I think in general about the series of unfortunate events and the experience of reading it is that I think it's all about the journey of reading it and what you learn along the way and I personally thoroughly enjoyed the ride. I just want to mention a few negative points and they may have a lot to do with just who I am as a reader and reading these books as an adult. Um, the first one is that the stories, the separate books, have this very repetitive thing going on because there's a lot of recapping of what happened in the book before. It's done in a good way, I think, but, you know, reiterating, okay, there's this guy called Olaf who is following the children. I think it's just done partly because of the audience and the books coming out, I think, once or twice a year. So you kind of have to remind your audience of what was happening. So I think that's where it came from. So that's why I never read more than two of the books per month just because it was just too much repetition. 
Another thing that made me a bit uncomfortable is the representation of um, people with deformities and disabilities in uh, one of the books as well as intersex non-binary people but that might also just be me as a modern reader and I have to say that this is handled way better in the Netflix series uh, which I'll come to in a minute. I have to say also in general that I feel like in the first four books it's very much setting the tone and the story itself and this overarching plot of the mystery um, around the secret organization and the parents drags a bit in these four first books so that's just something that maybe if you're considering reading the books you should know. Okay, so these were my thoughts on the books. I am just gonna briefly mention the Netflix adaptation that ran between 2017 and 2019. Should you watch it? <laughs> Ask any stable person, should I watch? And they will say, look away. No, I'm kidding. You should really watch it. Neil Patrick Harris is playing Count Olaf and I think he is doing an amazing job. I was a big fan as a kid of the film adaptation with Jim Carrey as Count Olaf and the thing is there was no other adaptation available and I just as a kid just wanted to have more of the orphans but Neil Patrick Harris is doing a way better job at portraying a very nuanced Count Olaf and I think he was really great in all of Count Olaf's personas that he's taking in the different books. I also really like that he brought in his musical talents and as Count Olaf um, considers himself an actor that fit really well and there are some musical interludes in some of the episodes which I thought were very fitting. And he also made the theme song so that's definitely a bonus as well because I think it's an amazing theme song. Also mentions for Lucy Punch who plays Esme Squalor. She is amazing and actually I have to say I think the casting in general was very good. A plus point for the series as well especially comparing it to the books is that I feel like this mystery arc is built up earlier in the series and I think that's done really well and that way you don't feel like the first episodes are really dragging and you don't understand what's happening. Lemony Snicket who is the narrator of the books is actually an on-screen character and he is narrating in the series and how that's been done I think is really cool and I also have to say that I was really pleased to see that the author Daniel Handler is an executive producer on the series and you can really feel that because it's very faithful to the books. Some changes were made yes but I feel like it's for cinematic effect and also some simplifications but not too many and I thought that was well done. There are also some characters who in the books are not physically featured but people talk about them that were added to the series and in most cases I think that was done really well. The literary references that are peppered in the books were sometimes replaced with cinematic references and that's just the best way of adapting these books. There is a scene that alludes to The Shining, there is some allusions to Doogie Howser of course because Neil Patrick Harris is there, um, Citizen Kane, The Great Gatsby, it's so 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 well done. So that's it guys, these are my thoughts on the series of unfortunate events, the books by Lemony Snicket as well as the Netflix adaptation from 2017 to 2019. Let me know, have you read the books? Have you watched the Netflix series? What did you think? Do you agree with me? What do you think of the themes that I talked about? I would love to discuss this series more now that I've finished it and if it sounds like it's something that you would be interested in, definitely give the series a go. The books are really a breeze to go through and I think even as adult readers can really bring a lot to your reading experience. Thanks so much for watching this probably quite longish video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!